Hello, my name's Marie, Marie Gabriel, and I'm here today to talk to you about potential careers all aimed at tackling health inequalities. I think the first thing I should do is tell you what I do. So I am what's called a chairperson. And a chairperson is someone who is appointed to lead the board of an organization. And the board of directors of any organization are the team of the most senior people who set the strategy and priorities and make key decisions on how services are delivered and resources are spent. Ultimately, we are accountable for the organization's success or failure. And I'm chair of three different organizations, the NHS Race and Health Observatory, the North East London Integrated Care System and Norfolk and Suffolk Foundation Trust, which is a trust and organization that delivers services for people with severe and enduring mental health illness. And within each of those roles, I have a focus on tackling health inequalities. At the Race and Health Observatory, we focus on tackling health inequalities between black and minority ethnic communities and the wider population. In North East London Integrated Care System, we're a partnership of eight different boroughs and all the health and social care organisations within them and the voluntary sector and the local communities. And together, we, we improve services, but we also tackle health inequalities between different communities within, within our geography. Um, and finally, at Norfolk and Suffolk Foundation Trust, we're really keen to address health inequalities because people with severe and enduring mental illness die up to 20 years earlier than their neighbours who don't have a mental health condition. So what are health inequalities? So health inequalities are avoidable and actually unfair differences in health across different groups of people within society. And health inequalities exist and are drawn from the different experiences and conditions that we live in, that we um, work in, and because of our personal character characteristics, you know, whether we're women, whether of our, our age and our gender. And these conditions, different, different conditions which we live and work in or who we are as individuals, provide um, opportunities to um, actually have good health. So they actually influence the way in which our health is likely, health outcomes and the health that we experience. Um, so, and they also actually shape the way in which we think and feel and act. So there's a diagram now on the um, presentation slide that shows you the different things that impact on people's health and health outcomes. And in the middle, there's a red circle, and it talks about your personal characteristics in that circle, your age, your gender, um, your uh, general health conditions, those kinds of things that are individual to you. The second thing that impacts on, your, on health inequalities are the things that you choose to do, your, your lifestyle factors, whether you smoke, for example, um, and your diet and your exercise. The yellow um, arc is about your networks. So one of the things that's really important to keeping you well and healthy is actually having very strong social networks, being an active part of your local community and having really good friendships and support networks. The wider green arc is all about your living and working conditions. So your kind of work environment, whether you're working at all, the kind of education you have, whether you live in urban or rural areas, and, and wider things such as having clean water. And finally, the curve, that's the purple curve, the lilac curve that's on the outside, talks about actual other factors, the social, economic, and environmental conditions in which you live in. So for example, you know, whether or not you have enough income um, to survive, you know, whether or not you're poor or have the means by which to access healthy food, um, whether there's anything in terms of the, the culture in which you live, 
that favours um, certain foods that are, that are unhealthy, um, or whether you live in an area of high pollution. And what happens if these factors together, um, people will experience them differently, and this will have an impact on their health and well-being. So just to give an example from the Race and Health Observatory, this is an infographic that we developed to talk to, that actually describes some of the differences in health outcomes between black and ethnic minority communities and the white communities that, that exist in the UK. So for example, for if you think about black women and black women who are pregnant, they are four times more likely than white women to die in pregnancy or childbirth in the UK. If you think about um, your um, black, and uh, black African and black Caribbean people, they're more likely to be subjected to community treatment orders than white people. These are, these are sort of um, a way in which people with mental health are supported and actually require to participate in, in, in um, mental health support. And if you think about the South Asian community, they have a 40% higher death rate from uh, cardiovascular heart disease. So when you look at this infographic, you see there's a range of different um, experiences and all of these can't be um, explained by the individual's actual personal characteristics, you know, that they are a BME member of the community, Black minority ethnic member of the community, and they also can't be explained away by the conditions that, that people live in either. So there's a range of reasons, but also a really clever person called Mo Professor Michael Marmot actually identified that actually that a person's ethnicity is also a kind of precursor to the, the wider determinants, the, the, the actual wonderful rainbow I showed you, um, in terms of the health outcomes that you can expect. One of the things that you'll hear about if you decide to pursue a career in tackling health inequalities is what's called a population health approach. And this is an approach that brings together four circles, four overlapping circles, as you can see in the, in the diagram. And what that does, it actually brings together um, the need to improve physical and mental health outcomes and promote well-being across a entire population by looking at the wider determinants that I spoke about in that in, in the nice rainbow, um, but also the way in which you act as individuals, um, but also doing stuff to intervene in terms of the communities and places. So thinking about how you can make sure there's good housing for everyone. And the fourth area that we want to bring together is the way in which we deliver services so that we integrate the services that support individuals that have a healthier lifestyle. So what kind of careers can you have um, that involve tackling health inequalities such as these that really help individuals and whole communities to have better life chances and to live longer and healthier lives? Well, actually, there's a whole range of careers and they're in different sectors. So there's a public sector where you can work, and that's local government, the civil service, the NHS and higher education um, institutions such as universities. You can also work in the private sector, for example, private companies and organisations and consultancy firms that would use people um, who have public health, which is the, the area that, that of, of career that you would be working within if you're working on tackling health inequalities, to help provide advice and support and guidance and to provide information to organisations tackling health inequalities. And finally, there's a whole range of um, employment opportunities within charities and voluntary organisations and social enterprises. The range of careers, as I said, is exceedingly vast, and so therefore are the range of entry requirements. But I've just given you, over the next two slides, a sprinkling of examples of 
the sorts of careers that you could have if you decide to work in a career tackling health inequalities or in public health, as the official term is. The first of which is as a volunteer. And there's, at the moment, there's been an explosion in volunteers who are working in trying to support people in accessing services um, in relation to COVID, and quite often called COVID champions, um, people who are trying to persuade members of their community who they know well or know about well to think about having a COVID vaccination. And this is a really good way to get started in a career in tackling health inequalities. And it's really about supporting people to access services um, to tackle the health inequalities they're experiencing. Probably in the next level up is a, is a worker that actually has a bit more knowledge of, of the key kind of facts and approaches and um, behavioural change um, uh, processes that you can employ to help people lead healthier lifestyles. An example of this is the smoking cessation worker, somebody who really understands the impact of tobacco, but also understands how you can support an individual to change the way in which they behave, to be able to move away from a habit that's dangerous to their health. A key area for in public health um, and in terms of health inequalities is actually understanding data, understanding information and insight. And this is really key to tackling health inequalities. So we need to understand um, what health inequalities exist, how they're experienced by different people, different communities, and actually what evidence we have that um, the approaches we're taking are really addressing those health inequalities, those unfair differences between different communities. And one of those is, uh, roles is a public health analysis. It's people who sit there with all sorts of different figures and facts and bring that together to provide, a, provide people with recommendations. There's also a role um, around an epidemiologist, which is a rather long term for people who understand disease and, and how um, disease impacts on communities and how that can be controlled. So public health is, is also actually about disease control. So if you worked, for example, in vaccinations, for childhood vaccinations, um, as, as, a, as, a, as a health worker, that would actually be involved in public health, tackling health inequalities. Oops. Um, other um, careers that are, are involved in tackling health inequalities include um, clinical roles such as nurses. Um, and they, and an example is a school nurse whose key objective is to keep children safe, healthy, and ready to learn. And they work with a whole range of other people to support young people and their families. Um, their midwives um, will support mothers to stop smoking. And district nurses and nurses that go into people's homes and they help people to manage long term conditions such as diabetes or heart disease and to prevent those diseases becoming worse or those conditions becoming worse for that individual. Quite differently, you may not have thought about this, but environmental health officers are a part of the wider public health workforce, helping to tackle health inequalities and what they do is they access and control factors that could have a poor impact on someone's health or community's health or cause diseases. And they usually work in local government. You might know them because you might see scores on the doors of your local takeaway um, and they'll give them a score for the hygiene in restaurants because you could have an outbreak of food poisoning if there's not good hygiene. And the final example I'll give you is a director of public health. This is a very senior role that will have a responsibility within a local council to develop a, the strategy for tackling health inequalities. And within that strategy, they're going to be accountable for making sure that there are all sorts of measures in place to tackle the wider determinants, things like housing and employment, but also the individual lifestyle factors of individuals in trying and in, in actually the differences and working on the differences between communities and how we can help certain communities who are not having as good as health outcomes improve those health outcomes. Um, and they're very senior um, um, roles. 
And I just wanted to, whoops, sorry. Um, I just wanted to show you um, the board at the Race and Health Observatory, which is one of the boards that I chair. And to just give an example of the different people who are, are working within, within the health. So within those pictures, there are a couple of lords. Um, one is Victor Adibowale, whose background is working in the voluntary sector in an organization called Turning Point that work with homeless people and a really great part of their work was reducing the poorer health outcomes of people who are homeless. Um, there's another one called AJ Karkar, who's also a Lord, who is a clinician by background, very interested in the different health outcomes of people who um, are, are seeking support from health, health services. Um, there's professor, a couple of professors there. There's Professor Mike Marmot, who's very famous and has written very important studies into health inequalities and what causes them, and actually has informed governance, governments about national governments about what changes they should make. Um, there's also a couple of people there who are nurses. So there's Dame Donna Kinnear, who is a nurse by background and started out her career tackling health inequalities. Um, and there's uh, other clinicians, for example, we've got Chan, who is um, a GP by background and very interested in how GPs can support their patients to um, address the health inequalities that exist and improve health outcomes for themselves. We also have James and Stephanie, who are academics, who um, research and um, build evidence and recommendations um, about how to tackle health inequalities. Um, and finally, we have a chief executive of a uh, NHS organization. And we also have uh, Pro Professor James, um, sorry, Professor David Williams, who's an international academic specializing in tackling health inequalities. And um, Dr. Kevin Fenton, who maybe people will recognize he's on the top row at the end, um, who's quite often on television talking about um, the health inequalities that have um, occurred because of COVID. So as you can see, there's a breadth of experience and knowledge that's coming together. And I'm sorry, I, I should have mentioned, we also have Alima, um, who is from uh, the chief executive of the Ronnie Trust, a voluntary organization, and John Appleby, who's a health economist, so looks at money and health and how you should use that money to promote good health. So, um, so there's such a range of careers. I was trying to think about how, what type of skills would you need? So one of the things that you do need to be able to do is analyze and interpret information about people and their health and the differences on that in, within that. You have to be able to, or enjoy actually reading a lot. So lots of literature and information on what works and what makes a difference and, and findings from, from the academics that I was talking about earlier. You also have to be really good at communication. So you have to be really good at communication because you've got to work in partnership with a lot of people. So if you're a director of public health, you're going to be working with in local government, um, um, with the NHS, with private businesses, with a voluntary organisation and with communities. But also you have to be an effective communicator because you're trying to persuade an individual to change their behaviour so they have better health outcomes. And you have to have really good written skills to be able to um, present reports and write plans for action and change. So this means that you should really be doing courses that will help you develop knowledge about different health needs, what influences people's health and well-being, and how you can prevent ill health and how to promote good health. Um, and there are specific courses that you would do for the whole range of actual examples that I was giving you earlier about careers in, in public health or in tackling health inequalities. So why do you want to, why would you want to work in a career tackling health inequalities as someone who spent their life um, thinking about how they can um, promote equality and social justice um, and eradicate areas where people end up having a worse outcome um, in, in life, whether that's in education or employment and health, I think 
it is really is a, a career where you can make a huge difference. You can work with individuals or whole communities or whole boroughs of people to help them live um, and have healthier and longer lives. And it's really good to be able to see the impact of your work. There's nothing better than helping people have a better life. Um, and you can work with whole populations and help in those whole populations. You know, so if you're living in the London borough or within a county council area, you can be working with that, that whole community to help people stay healthy and keep them protected from disease and, and to help them reduce the health inequalities that they experience. I think you have a range of places that you can work. Um, so you can work within voluntary organisations within the community. You can work in local government and councils and the NHS. But you also can work in, work in the private sector or in the academic se sector or actually within government departments nationally. And it's a really good career for thinking about how you can progress um, and how you can go up the career ladder. And in most of those settings, there's really are good terms and conditions. And finally, it's a career that, where you can work locally, regionally, nationally, or as I showed you from, with Professor David Williams, internationally on creating a change for communities, not only just at home, but across the world. Thank you so much for listening to my uh, talk today. I really hope you give serious consideration to tackling, for a career in tackling health inequalities uh, within public health. You won't regret it, I promise you. Thank you.